Welcome to another great episode of American Rifleman Television, brought to you by Ruger, rugged, reliable firearms. We've covered Crimson Trace lasers a lot on this show, but this week we sent Joe Kurtenbach out there to build one for himself. Also this week, we'll test the Daniel Defense Mark 12, and finally, our I Have This Old Gun is an unusual variation of the O3 A3 made by Santa Fe. But right now, let's head to Oregon and Crimson Trace. This week we're in Wilsonville, Oregon at Crimson Trace and we're getting an in-depth look at Crimson Trace's 1911 laser grips. Just as the gun itself has evolved, so too have Crimson Trace's offerings to fit everything from full-size models to compact and with different materials from polymer to real wood and G10. We're going to see how these are produced and then we're going to spend some time on the range. You know, it's said in the industry that the that the 1911 is the uh, is the black hole that will take everything that you want to put into it, whether it's ammunition, um, anything that you want to trick the product out with. So, it didn't take uh, Lou and Crimson Trace very long to figure out that uh, for instinctively activated uh, laser sighting systems, uh, the 1911 was really the the perfect product for uh, for Crimson Trace lasers and. Ever since then, and we figured out how to uh, how to wrap the grips around a 1911, and again make it instinctively activated, which is really what sets us apart and differentiated us for for all of these years. Um, ever since we figured that out, that's been the the big wagon that we've hitched our horse to. I've got Tong here, who's a very experienced technician. In fact, he's one of the instructors here for new employees on the line. There's a lot of delicate technical work here. He's gonna do the majority of that, and I'm gonna pitch in where I can. All right, so one of the first steps here is we've got our circuit board, and that goes into a specially made fixture. There's different fixtures for the different parts. This one's specifically for that 401 green laser. And what Tong is doing right now is soldering on the battery contact. So once this is an assembled laser grip, that's where the batteries are gonna go in to power the unit. Now you can see that the solder points for those battery contacts, they're very small. This is very fine work he's doing. And it's, it's easy for a guy who's done a million, but for a guy seeing this for the first or second time, it looks like very technical, very difficult work. Next, what we're working on here is the diode. He's got the green laser diode, and then a little bit of tubing goes over, and those are gonna secure the wires in place. The next thing we're gonna be working on is the master on-off switch. That's the on-off switch on the side of the laser grip that you can actually turn the whole unit off if needed. Now that too is going to be attached to this main circuit board. Typically on this line that we're gonna run through, there's three people actually, right? There's yeah. one person handling this station, doing the soldering and everything. And then when we get to assembly, that'd be another person and sight in is it a third person. That's uh -huh. a typical assembly line here, yeah, right? Yeah, correct. To watch this entire episode on Outdoor Channel, contact your TV provider today.